want Gavin in the lizard makeup. Hey, boss. I ain't never seen no reptiles with mascara on before. <laughs> I'm going out across the thing. I know it. In my racing form, Dolores. You really think people are going to go to the movies to see uh, lizard monsters, Nate? Not people. Teenagers. Youth market. Also a college-educated urban group. That's why I got Ashley doing the rewrite and a classy babe like Butler in the park. We do our market research, pal. Dolores. What's on my schedule for today? One o'clock lunch with the Urban Redevelopment Corporation. Your tux is ready for a final fitting at three. At four, the men from the art gallery arrive with selected items from the Contemporary Masterpieces Collection for your approval. You know, Ray, it's a great decision to do this on location. We get to spend some time together, get to know each other a little better. It's an expensive decision and an expensive location. The dailies look sensational, Ray. Nate, you're playing with the house's money. I'm the house. The overage won't increase. We've got a handle on it. We only got two weeks shooting left. One week. Infinito. You got that? OK. Sure. I think we can get everything we need in a week. I knew that. Wow. She guarantees eight million in box office grosses and more headaches for me than the rest of my contract players put together. You're making a terrible mistake, you know. Old villain may look good at the gate, but he'll finish badly. He's got good legs, just hasn't got heart. Now, dangerously close has heart. Enough for 20 triple crowns. Take it from me. Where I come from, we can always spot a winner. Isn't that right, Nathan? Oh, right, babe. Listen, Ray, I got contract players and commissary girls Mansfield lookalikes. I can even deliver a genuine ex of a bona fide member of the Rat Pack. I got flesh up to here. It's all yours, Ray. Only stay away from that. That looks like Ingrid Bergman before Rosalini, huh? America before Columbus. The Garden of Eden, right, Ray? Wrong. Wrong, I'm warning you. That's trouble. She's dangerous, trust me. Paulie, place my bet. Right, Ray. Full villain. No. What do you mean? Play dangerously close instead. Seeking this rotten excuse of a friend on us. <laughs> what did I do? We've seen all the shows. We did everything. Exactly. And thanks to you, I never want to roll another pair of dice. I never want to drink another bottle of champagne. I never want to see another beautiful woman again. You're plotting to kill me, Polly. Admit it. I take the fifth. Under the grounds, I might discriminate against myself. <laughs> OK, you and Polly have something in common. You both speak English as a second language. <laughs> Seriously, my friends. Thank you. Roberto and I have had a wonderful time. 
Roberto. Oh, yes. Uncle. And in return, I'd like to invite you to a party. You must return to my house for El Dia de los Muertos, the day of the dead. On that day, the dead walk the earth. Then we have a great celebration. <laughs> you must come. But Uncle, that will be too late. Too late to resolve our problems. Problems? Do we have problems? Yes, we have the slowest waiter in North America. Roberto, bring us another bottle. But we already have. Now. He is young. He is hot-headed. But on the other hand, he is not very smart. When your sister calls and asks you to give her son work, take my advice, Ray. Be out of town. What kind of problems, Jorge? Small time. The Mendoza brothers, they are never happy. Are people in Sonola? Are they trying to squeeze us on the production end? Yeah, they try. They are greedy. But they don't have the stones to face off with you and me. You come down to my place for the weekend, and we'll straighten it all out. Then we relax under the sun, huh? <laughs> all right? Paulie, where are we this weekend? I don't know, boss. We ain't there yet. Pterodactyls. Beautiful creature's a beautiful creature. Right, Nate? <laughs> By the way, I'd like you to meet the latest sensation of Hill Studios, Miss Mona DeSant. She's a dead ringer for Bardot, isn't she, Ray? Yeah, sure, Nate. Whatever Mr. Hill's been saying about me, it is all true. Now, Miss Butler and I are having what's known on the coast as creative differences translated. That means we'd like to kill each other. I want to do the most wonderful movie being made in Mexico next month with Antonioni. Except Mr. Hill won't let me. Unfortunately, Pet, you still have a contract with me to honor. Honor? This one is that part of your vocabulary. <laughs> <laughs> he expects me to go from this ridiculous science fiction picture into some atrocious biblical epic. But she with the queen? It's gonna be spectacular. Love. That little bit of advice from the bottom of my heart, Ray. Bottom of your heart, Nate? It's a pretty long drop. <laughs> I got stuck in a three-picture deal with Nathan, thanks to my crook of an ex-manager. Then after the first abomination, I went off to Europe to do one, two, three with Wilder. It was the most wonderful experience. Did you see it? No, sorry. Well, really marvelous offers have fluttered ever since. I mean, serious films with directors like Bunuel and Georges Frangieu. But Nathan Hill only cares about Nathan Hill, and he won't let me go. That's why you don't like him. It's part of it. I want you to meet some people. This is Mr. Ray Luca. He's a friend of mine. All right. Listen, don't forget, we have lunch with Houston this week. He wants to talk iguana. Houston is not the way to go. Cukor has a wonderful script over at Metro. No. Teddy is like this ultra-modern bird. She should be working with Godard, Melville, Truffaut, I don't know. Antonioni. Oh, come on, honey. He put Can to sleep with that three-hour flopperoo, uh... Loventura. Check it out, man. That is like the definitive study of modern angst. Antonioni, this is the guy you want to work with in Mexico. Yes, but there's all kinds of problems, even besides Nathan Hill. He can't get permits, visas, I don't know. I'll look into it. So, uh, are you in the business, Mr. Lucas, was it? Luca. Ray Luca. Right. I'm in all kinds of businesses.
It's only fireworks. Do you have that many enemies? It only takes one. Are you really good? I'm a businessman. Not the type that went to Harvard in prep school. You're not the man in the gray flannel suit, are you? Everything I know about somebody like you is a Hollywood cliche. Acted out by some male model who thinks he's tough because he's seen a Bogart movie. But you, Mr. Ray Luca, you're the real thing, aren't you? Some real California gold under our Mexican sun, eh? <laughs> hey, Roberto, quite a night, isn't it, eh? Yes, my uncle. A wonderful night. I decide business, not you. Never, ever go against me in public. Do you hear me? Do you hear me? Do you hear me? Do you hear me? Wait! I can see that you like beautiful things. And you're not afraid to take chances. You like art? Yes. Good. Bought it all today. <laughs> today. <laughs> You're laughing at me. I always laugh at men. Particularly when I'm falling in love. Laughter's the best defense. about that dance you owe me? Exist. Am I just pretending dreams come true? And is heaven wise opening my eyes to someone like you? Sorry, it's an old habit. <laughs> Come on, show me what else you got to. Look at this. Everything you need right here. Can you get me whatever I need, Ray? Can you order it up and make it happen?
What do you need, baby? What do you want? I want that. You got it. Can you be the rainbow that I chase? Won't you in this yearning that I feel? This makes me happy. Tell me that it's so what I want to know. Tell me that you're real. Boss! Boss! Come on, time to go to work. Come on, get up, Ray. You got a big day, boss. Your schedule today is you have Antonio Delgado at 10.30 at the Vista Blanca, then lunch with Mr. Cosmatos of Cosmatos Shipping at 12.30. The landscape architects will be at your house at 3 o'clock p.m. Max Goldman suggested drinks at 6 o'clock at the Golden Lady. Anything else? Your words for the day are egregious, absurd, outstandingly bad, folly. Holiday <laughs> means day off means cancel everything. Mr. Delgados has come all the way from Caracas. I don't care if he's come from out of space. He'll have to wait. Today, I'm busy. And cancel my day as well. Tell Nathan he'll just have to shoot around me. And what about your dinner this evening with Mrs. Luca? Wait a minute. Don't cancel dinner. You call Delgado. Tell him to join us. Right. <laughs> Holly, get this out of here. You need to discover something, boss. Holly. Get out of here. How about those Vegas showgirls, folks? You know, they're not making showgirls like they used to. At least, I'm not. <laughs> but seriously. Good evening, folks, Mr. Luca. Nice to uh, see you again, Mrs. Luca. Hello, Jose. The table's ready. Thank you. Uh, hi, Ray. Been thinking about you. Thought you said you were living like a monk while I was gone. Even a monk's got to eat. Yeah. Well, she don't look like much of a cook to me. Jose, we'll have two Chateaubriands, medium rare. And the 48 Latash. I'll have some wine. Very well. Corey, I've got to make a call. I'll be right back. Get me some cigarettes. And make that medium rare. And gum. You know, my mother-in-law is so ugly. Hey, you can't come in here. You make me hate everything that doesn't taste and smell like you. You gotta get away from here. Just leave it to me. I'll get you away. What are you doing? I'm packing your bags. What does it look like I'm doing? How did you know I was going away? Polly told me. How did he know? Do I know? He said you have an Aero Mexico flight at one o'clock. So you better move it. <laughs> What's the matter with you? Something bothering you? No, why? You seem worried like there's something on your mind. You know, just business.
You want to talk about it? You know, I would do anything to make it easier on you. Is there something I'm not doing that I could? Buy me something. Take me to Teddy. What? I said take me to Teddy. She's at the Versailles. Ray! Come on, Paulie, step on it, move. You got a dinner invitation, I'm a seal. I'm gonna take her with me. You're violating the first commandment of business. Broads and work, don't mix. What work? I got maybe 10 minutes with Jorge. Then we're going on vacation. I'm gonna take Teddy horseback riding. Man, we're gonna have a ball. What about me? You fix me up one of the Mexican movie stars or something? Yeah, I'll introduce you to Minnie Minoso, all right? Is she nice? You know, nice. Yeah, she's a knockout, Paulie. <laughs> Why do I feel like I'm being kidnapped? Because you are. I'm going to put you in a tower where nobody can find you except me. Oh, good. Just like the ogre in the fairy tale. What are you doing? Let's get one thing straight, OK? I don't like photographers. I don't like them around. It's part of my job. Well, it's not part of mine. Being a businessman? Smile, Miss Butler. Certainly isn't Rosarita Beach. I promise. Just 10 minutes of business and then we'll get away. And anyway, you and me are together, baby. That's the Garden of Eden. <laughs> Welcome. OK. My friend. <laughs> Good to see you, my you friend. Too. OK, let me introduce. Uh, uh... Everyone knows Teddy Butler. When I first saw you, I thought I was having a hallucination. The heat in Mexico is like a drug. You must take care while you are here. <laughs> Hello, Ray. You're looking much happier. Hello, Estrella. That's because I am. My wife, Estrella, Miss Teddy Butler, the movie star. Jorge and I love your movies. Thank you. Estrella will see that you are comfortable. Yes, of course. I will show you to your rooms. Miss Butler? Miss Butler. What did you bring her here for, Ray? This is no place for a woman like that. We got 10 minutes of business, right? And then I'm on vacation. I'm sorry we could not speak more plainly in Las Vegas, Ray. We have some serious things to take care of here, some serious business. You just walked right into the middle of a war with your movie star. Buenos dias. Good morning. We must talk. Now? Now. The Mendoza brothers are here. Teddy, uh, this won't take long. Why don't you go ahead and eat breakfast, all right? This table is set for you. 
All right. The Mendoza brothers asked for this meeting. They wanted to meet with you face to face. You said there was going to be a war. They are threatened to sell their crop to someone else. Why? Because they are greedy pigs. Puercos codiosos. My father says the problem is money. You and Jorge get the lion's share while he is left with nothing. But we get the lion's share of the money because we take the lion's share of the risk. He says that they take the majority part of the money because the risk of them is greater. We also take the risk of the danger and the expenses continue to rise. We are going to sell the harvest in another part. We have risks too, and our expenses are going up. The recent elections brought a new government officials that must be paid off unless our percentage goes up. Sell our crops somewhere else. No one will pay you as much as we do. Pedro Munoz will. A punk, a pocho from Nuevo Laredo. Sure, he offers you a good price. So he can cut it in half a year from now. If he lives that long. Oh, yes. A mí no me importa si vive o no. Lo que me importa es que nos paguen. He says it's not important whether he lives or dies, as long as their share is equal to yours. What? All right. All right. Everybody stays cool. We can work this out. You think we are a stupid peasants, but I know this. Without us, you will have nothing to sell. I think I'm being hustled here. So, we're talking about 10 to 12 million. What's going on? I thought we were going horseback riding. I'm doing business now. We'll go later. You said 10 minutes. It's been over an hour. What kind of vacation is this? Go when I'm finished. <laughs> Women, eh? They're so chemical, eh? Dicen que las mujeres son químicas, ¿entiendes? So where were we? Ten million, right? Señor Lucas, gracias. Un placer y hasta la vista. Gracias. Gracias. Gracias a usted. Oye, dile que me gusta, como controla las viejas. He says he likes the way you handle your women. Bueno. Pues ya va a estar la máquina. Eso es, hermano, como bueno. Muy bien. We need to talk in private. My uncle is a liar. He's cheating you. He's supposed to pay you 30% of the wholesale price in Chicago, right? But he's lying to you about how much comes in. He's only paying you 20. How do you know? He brags about it. He laughs at you behind your back. Roberto, why are you telling me this? My father is tired of my uncle's lying ways. Tired of taking crumbs from his hands. That is why he wanted you to come to Mexico. To see you and judge you for himself. 
Judge me for what? He wants your help. To do what? To kill my uncle. On El Dia de los Muertos. The Day of the Dead. I'll let you know. Why did you make me do that? Where are you going? Home. Why? Because nobody treats me like a concubine. What do you want? You can't come up into my face like that in front of those men. What did you expect? Who do you think I am? One of those guys who carries your bags and runs for champagne for you in the middle of the night, huh? Nobody's ever hit me, not in my whole life. I got a life, too, and I want you in it. Yeah, sure you do, Ray, behind slammed doors. You want background scenery, not me. Now go. <clears throat> now we're even. What is it? It's a quality I envy. A quality I could use. You? Come on, you're a champion. Not with Nathan Hill, I'm not. He won't let me do that picture down here no matter what. He says if I break my contract, he'll break me. I don't know what to do. I do. Then the fun part. Yeah, they build it all up. You know what happens then? A couple days shooting. Nero greets the Roman populace, Christians, lions. Then, bam, Nero goes nuts. He burns the whole thing down. We're well, going to talk it. to you, Nate. Let me call you back. How's it going, Ray? Take off. I want to talk to you about Teddy Butler. <laughs> oh, you can handle her, you can have her. I hate women who talk back. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like she's got legitimate beefs with you, Nate. Hey, Teddy Butler's a spoiled brat with a trust fund. She thinks that gives her the right to call the shots. I got to be honest, Ray. When I first saw you sniffing around her, I was a little dismayed. But maybe you're just the thing Teddy needs to keep her in line. Talk to her. If that doesn't work, do whatever you do that makes her smile. She likes it a little rough, and the high-toned ones usually do. Let her have it rough. She likes it sweet, treat her like honey, but get her off my back. Is that all you have to say about it? What else is there to say? Teddy's contract. Do me a favor, Nathan. Tear it up. Come on, Ray. Tear it up, Nathan. No. I'm not tearing nothing up. This is my ticket, Ray. My ticket to the A-list. Class pictures, big stars. This is my ticket to everything I worked for my whole life. So forget trying to muscle me, because I know Manny, too. We go way back. I got markers to call in on Manny, so back off. Call in your markers, Nathan. Call them in. See if they're worth as much as you think.
Tear it up, Nathan. I don't care about the service in the past. I want silk sheets, and I want them changed every day. Mr. Luca, Miss Butler is... Complete capitulation of all my demands. And two dozen roses from Nathan Hill. What a winner you are. Oh, good. By the way, you can tell that uh, Italian director, what's his name? I took care of his visa problems. And all the permits have been arranged. He can start uh, whenever he likes. And so can you. Here. You earned them. These belong to you. And you belong to me. I'm sorry, Mr. Lucas, she's still not home. Call her again! You know, it's funny, I, I hated this planet when we got here. Nothing but sand and cactus. Now I... They might let you stay. No, they'll keep to the old rules, forgetting the very reasons. What the hell is going on? What? Cut! Where is she? Ray. Ray, baby, come on. we got to get this shot. Come on. Ray. Come on, Ray. Ray Where is get, she? we got to get this shot, Ray. Now, come on. Nathan. You poor dumb slob. You want to know where she is? She's in Hermosillo, Ray, making a movie. <laughs> she played you like a pro. What do you think she's hanging around you for, huh? You? You think she wants what you got? She can get what you got from any young stud in this country and get it better. Maybe we're taking the fights. Emil Griffith's fight. Go away, Polly. You gotta eat something, boss. Oh, let me get you some food. Ray, I'm worried about you. Who's this broad that you should make you sick like this? I said get out of here! Kisses, the sunburned hands I used to hold Since you went away The days grow long And soon I'll hear You know what 
tomorrow is, Paulie? November 2nd, the Day of the Dead. Perfect time to take care of two pieces of unfinished business. You understand if you fail? If you are clumsy and get caught, my family and I will be the first to scream for your blood. You don't want my blood, man. That's 100 proof. Yeah, we're going to have a time tonight, Polly. We're going to be rocking and rolling to the break of dawn. Hola, como estas? This is the beginning of an alliance that will last a lifetime. Back on Dios, amigos. Got the props? <laughs> yeah, boss. We're gonna be scary. Real scary. Frank, you got the layout? Yeah, I can sleep watch the joint. You guys remember every detail? Yeah, got it. It's time. He said he's a friend of yours. It's all very mysterious. But then again, it's the day of the dead. Are you our host? He left without saying goodbye. We're grown up. We're adults. We should be able to be between the lines, right? I mean, why make things uncomfortable for each other? Uncomfortable? I thought you and I had plans. Sorry, darling. That movie wrapped.
away. I said, leave me alone. Don't come near me. Shut the hell up. Stay away from me. Stay away from you? Fine. Ray. Please don't leave me alone. You like power? This is power. Built on blood. You know what this is? This is real. This is not some cardboard set with lights and pretty people. It's where I live. And you know why? Huh? Because it's the only place worth my time. Hasta, baby. Hasta luego.